Let's talk about Metallica's Eye of the Beholder. From its turbulent recording history to the profound message in its lyrics, explore why Lars Ulrich called it awkward. An awkward feels awkward to me. And dive into the intricate instrumentals that set it apart. Join us in decoding the enigmatic pre-chorus and unraveling the mystery together. What's up guys, I'm Brian and welcome to my channel. Here we deep dive into the histories behind songs and the bands that created them. I love dissecting Metallica's music from their iconic guitar tones to my personal take on their songs. And from that sprang an idea for me to cover all of their songs from their first five albums. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Let's get into Eye of the Beholder. Released on September 7th, 1988, Eye of the Beholder is the third track on the now iconic And Justice For All. This album marked a significant moment for the band, as it was their first without their late bassist Cliff Burton, who tragically passed away in 1986 in a bus accident. Now, in the studio and in the band, we have Jason Newstead. I bet this new guy really sucks. Who would lay down bass tracks that ultimately wouldn't make it to the final cut of the album. The recording process had a share of pitfalls with having two different producers try and make the album with the band. Originally, Lars Ulrich wanted to work with Mike Klink, who had produced Appetite of Destruction. However, Klink's involvement in the album was short-lived, and they had to convince Fleming Rasmussen, who had done their last two albums, to come over to California. This would mark the last album that he would work with Metallica on. I, the Beholder became one of the standout singles from the album, released on October 30th, 19 1988, nearly two months after the album's release, and a mere 72 days before the third single, One, which would ultimately be the more popular song. Despite its significance, the song has only been played live 125 times, and that makes it the fifth most played song from Injustice for All, behind One, Harvester of Sorrow, Blackened, and The Justice Bentley. The last time the song was played in, in its entirety was July 14th of 1989, although it will appear occasionally during The Justice Bentley, which was popular during the Black Album touring cycle. The song made a brief appearance during the Live Shit Binge and Purge CD and DVD as a part of the Justice Medley, but notable live performances are scarce for the song. Clocking in at 6 minutes and 25 seconds, I Have Beholder was written by the core trio of the band, James Hadfield, Lars Ulrich, and Kirk Hammett. The song delves into the concepts of freedom, highlighting how it can be subjective and can be limited by social norms and laws. It takes a stance against the constraints on freedom of speech and expression. James Hadfield's lyrics in the song shed a light on government-controlled freedoms. The title, I Have Beholder, draws its name from Truth is in the eye of the beholder which emphasizes different perspectives on things. Interestingly, Lars Ulrich in an interview expressed his dissatisfaction with the song in 2020, finding it somewhat disjointed due to the varying tempos and rhythms. Lars Ulrich had this to say. Uh, it's got a, a, a straight 4-4, four, four, and then the chorus is like in a, in a, in a shuffle beat, and um, how you force those two different drum beats up against each other uh, when you were, I don't know what, 25 years old, that seemed um, maybe easier through a lot of uh, tenacity and, uh, and, and a lot of steadfastness or whatever, you know. Nowadays, it sounds like kind of a train wreck to me. <laughs> Eye of the Beholder is comprised of seven distinct riffs. You have the main one, which is the... And that's the rhythm for part of the intro and the uh, verses. The song offers a lot of variation, which keeps the song dynamic. And that dynamic feel of the song is what Lars hated about it. Like Lars mentioned, most of the song is in 4-4. You have the pre-chorus in 12-8, which is this riff. <laughs> While it's considered one of the easier songs on the album, this song can be difficult for some new beginning guitarists. Like, I feel that this, um, br the bridge section it can be really tough and it has a lot of parts to remember. So for this recording, James Enfield used his iconic ESP guitar, the one with the 8160, just like this one Harley Benton's modeled after. And he played that through a Mesa Boogie Mark IIc Plus. And this is the exact same setup that he used for Master of Puppets. So here's my tone for the song. I'm using my Harley Benton EX84 with the 8160 in the bridge, just like James's iconic ESPs. But this time I'm going through a um, the caliper from Audio Assault, because I feel like I want to just switch it up the tones a little bit. And I'm still using a Metallica and Justice For All IR from the one I have in the description, the one I've been using the entire time, because those sound really good. So my personal favorite part of the song is the uh, bridge section, which has a lot of harmonies in it. It's the... Um, I 
really like that part a lot. It has, Kirk plays a um, harmony over the top of it. I think it sounds really cool. The only other really confusing part is the, I've been practicing this song using an instrumental version and the counts on the pre-choruses are really weird. So the first, this is the pre-chorus. <laughs> And the first time it's played in the song, it's played five times, and all the other riffs in the song are usually played around four times. And the second time you hear it in the song, it's played five times. But then, uh, the third time it comes around, it's only played four times, which really messed with my head a lot at the first time I played it. But the song isn't too extremely hard. It's pretty simple riffs. It just needs a lot of rhythm hand techniques, like the um, intro. <laughs> And I know a lot of people like to say that James down picks everything, but you can clearly hear in the song that he's alternate picking that part, because it would sound really weird if he was just straight hammering down strokes the whole time. So now I've gone through some of the sections of the song. Here's Eye of the Beholder.
know what I know Your money, yeah, and your wealth You silence just to hear yourself Do you want what I want? Desire not a thing I hunger after independence Strength and freedom ring Doesn't matter what you see Or into it what you read You can do it your own way If it's done, it's how I say Independence limited Freedom of choice is made for you, my friend Freedom of speech is words that they will bend Freedom no longer frees you Doesn't matter what you see Or into it what you read You can do it your own way If it's done just how I say I, the Beholder carries a significant legacy. It marked a pivotal moment in the band's history, being the first album without bassist Cliff Burton. The recording process was marked by challenges, including a change in producers, but it resulted in a track that stood out and became the second single for And Justice For All. This song isn't just about music, it delves into the complex concept of freedom, highlighting how it's shaped by societal norms and laws. It takes a bold stance against the limitations on freedom of speech and expression, a theme that really remains relevant today. Yeah, what about freedom of speech, the Constitution? Interestingly, despite its significance, Eye of the Beholder has been somewhat overshadowed by Metallica in live performances. It's played far less frequently than other hits in their discography. And Lars Ulrich himself expressed reservations about the song's structure and overall feel. Not good enough. However, as a fan, I think the song deserves more recognition. It's a testament to Metallica's ability to create intricate rhythms and harmonies, with the bridge section being a standout example of that. It's a song that resonates with me personally and ranks among my favorites from the band. If you enjoyed what you watched here, please check out my other videos. I'll have a playlist at the end of this video with all my other Metallica song covers and histories. And please don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you can, and if you enjoyed what you watched. Let me know what I missed in the comments, and also tell me what makes this song special to you. Obviously, I plan on doing all the Metallica songs from the first five albums, but I also have other ones in the works right now. If you'd like me to check out any other bands, other songs you'd like me to check out, leave them in the comments. Maybe I'll do a future video on them. Peace.